If you feel stuck in your current reality, understand it is not due to something on the outside that is keeping you stuck. You may say, well, it's this nine to five job and that's the reason I'm stuck. It's because I have to pay my bills and I have to do what my parents want me to do and that's the reason that I'm stuck. You may say, it's, well, it's because of this limitation that I have or I've never learned how to actually make more money or to attract love or whatever it is and that's the reason I'm stuck. Now, the thing is, is anything and any reason we feel stuck, we can blame it on the external but understand, the external is just a reflection of the internal. So the emotion of feeling stuck, which is also rooted in fear, there's a fear that is there towards the unknown, towards a new you, a new reality. And there's a comfort that's found with the same. For years, I stayed in a nine to five job that I hated because it felt familiar. And I knew intellectually and even energetically that I wasn't passionate about it. But there was something about it that felt so familiar. And I think a lot of times we fight to stay in familiar energy because we aren't aware that that's something that's active in our energy. Even though we know we don't like it. For me, the whole ex-stepmom thing and attracting women in my life that were controlling, I knew intellectually, I do not want to have to experience more of what I experienced from seven to 15 years old with having control and like an army sergeant in my life that was like telling me what to do. I knew that I wanted to experience more than that and I knew that I didn't want to keep attracting narcissistic people into my life. But for some reason, it kept happening. Either an ex-girlfriend that was controlling and jealous or a manager that was telling me what to do and gaslighting all the employees, but we couldn't get her fired because she was protected by upper management. In a weird, interesting way, there was something about that that felt familiar. I was getting my fix of familiarity. And that's because my, what was actually stuck about me was a belief in my own victimhood. It was a belief that reality was fixed. It was a belief that said that this is the way reality is. People try to control me. This is the way reality is. I have to work a nine to five job I freaking hate. This is the way it is. It's just not fair. Things in life aren't fair. And that kept me stuck in those energies. And what was really the thing that was keeping me stuck was my own stubbornness. I was stubborn based on the beliefs of what I believed about myself. That's the thing. That's the key to your freedom. The key to your freedom is asking yourself, what do I believe to be true about myself that I'm bought into that's keeping me stuck? And a lot of times this may have been things the external told you as a reference experience. But you can, you can choose whether you internalize it or not. When I was told I had ADHD by other people I worked with, I was told that by first by other people I worked with. I wasn't even told that by a doctor at first. And I was told that and people say, what's wrong with you? There's something wrong with you. Why do you have so much energy? And I'd say, oh man, there's something wrong with me. I have so much energy. And then I go to a doctor and a doctor says, oh, you have a lot of energy. And there was no even blood work done. There was no blood work done to tell if I have ADHD. What if ADHD is an excess of energy that's just not being channeled into specific passions or specific things? I never got blood work done. That's one thing I'm realizing right now. There was no blood work. There were, how does, reality is based, is a lot of times based on agreement. We believe certain things, we buy into it, it becomes our reality, we identify with it, we attach to the perspectives, and then we stay stuck in that reality. For a long time, I was stuck in a reality of, of dependency. I was dependent on Adderall, prescription drug with harsh side effects for ADHD. I was dependent on the nine to five job that I thought I had to go to. And that dependency kept me stuck in that reality because of my rigidity on what I believed to be true. And the freedom for me came when I started to question the shit that people told me. I started to even question my own belief systems. 
Everything in life is a reflection of what we believe to be true. If we believe we can be, in, if, if, if someone loses a job and they believe that it's a good thing, they'll find a better job or they'll launch their business or whatever the hell like, will happen because of the belief, because of the meaning they give it. If somebody loses their job and they say, see, I'm not worthy. I'm not even good enough to do this job that I probably hate. I'm not even good enough for that. And then they maybe, they, they stay out of a job or they just, uh, they, they get depressed on themselves because of the meaning they give it. Everything in our reality is neutral except for the, the meaning we give it is what we impose on upon our reality. So when people say I'm stuck, I want you to become aware of when somebody else says they're stuck or they start complaining about reality. They start complaining about their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their mom, their dad. They're complaining and there's a part of them that probably feels very familiar with that complaining energy. There's a, pro there's a part of them that probably gets a little bit of a payoff of the victimization, of feeling right about something. And this is something that you want to question within yourself because that's the key to freedom. The more you argue for your own limitations, the more you will stay inside that reality. The more you are able to question yourself, not in a way where you're constantly doubting your own power. I'm talking about questioning your own limitations. I remember one time I was at the gym. I was working out with this guy that I was, I, there was this dude, he, was, he looked like a Viking. It was this dude that had this like long red hair. He was, he was probably on, he was huge. He was like a super buff dude. And I liked his mentality of how he worked out. I went to, this is back in Vegas. I went to the gym a lot. So uh, one time, I, I forget, we're doing a workout, so I got to know him, and I said, hey, man, let's work out more. We started working out together because there was a part of me that wanted to work out with this big dude because like, I knew that that would make me better, so I started working out with him. And I remember one time, we were doing this thing where it was a push-pull sled thing where you, you have this like sled with all these stacked weights on top of it, and we were putting, you know, you'd have like hundreds of pounds on it, and you would pull it with this rope. And I remember one time specifically, I was working out with him. He's, this dude's like an aggressive dude, like uh, kind of like a harsh dude, which is good. I, sometimes I like that, probably because there's a part of me that, that feels familiar. I was 7, 15 years old and I was being told what to do. But there's a, a part of me that liked the competition. I like to be challenged to get better. So this guy that I was working out with, we're doing this push-pull thing. And then as, we're getting ready to, as I'm getting ready to do my set to pull, this dude that was a trainer goes and sits on the sled as like a joke, but not a joke. He's like sitting on the sled, like pull me. So I have this three to 400 pounds on this, on this sled thing, plus a 200 pound dude that just sat on it. And I just dropped the rope and I told my friend, his name is Mike. I was like, I can't do that. And he looks at me and he goes, how do you fucking know? He's like, how do you know you can't do that? You just literally dropped the rope and said you can't do that. How do you know that? And I was like, I don't know. I could tell it was that like a belief block there. And then I, I picked up the rope and I started pulling with all my energy. And at first it didn't really move. Like the guy that was sitting on it was waiting for me to try. There was all this weight underneath him and it didn't really move at first. But then I kept putting my energy into it and very, very slowly, almost barely moving, it started to inch towards me. And then as I started to gain a little bit of momentum, it started coming just a little bit faster. It took me like a minute or two to get this guy across the floor. But after he came across the, score, the, the floor, my dude Mike did me a big service. He's like, don't ever tell yourself you can't do something until you try. And in that moment, I realized that I was my own self-critic. I was stopping myself from doing something that I just didn't even try to do. I think some of us, had parents growing up that didn't encourage us to push our own comfort zone. They didn't encourage us to step into the unknown. They didn't encourage us to push against our edge. And sometimes what we got to do is we got to either surround ourselves with people that help us to grow or we got to be the one that like incentivizes ourselves to grow. Don't ever let some, don't ever let yourself, you, you might say like, don't ever let someone else tell you what you can or can't do. Don't ever let your own limited ego tell you what you can or can't do without first trying and having the intention to break out of your own comfort zone because that's how growth happens. You wanna grow your muscles, you gotta push past your, your comfort zone and it's gonna suck, there's gonna be tension. 
Tension is a beautiful thing. Sometimes in the spiritual community, we believe tension sucks. Tension is how you grow. Tension is how you put, you know, like maybe pressure on your muscles and then it demands something more of them and then they, they gain muscle because the body is always adapting. Well, you in your life, your identity is always adapting. And the thing is, is people are adapting to the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over again because they don't push themselves. They don't branch outside of their comfort zone. They stay in the known. They argue for their own limitations. I've realized I do this even now in my own life in different ways. I argue because there, there's, a, there's a, a desire to be right about things, even though a lot of times at the expense of being right, I'm giving up happiness. My ego wants to be right. And I think a lot of times we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we don't even know it and you, we become aware of it, that's when we're going to really be able to break free. Something I, just, I was reading about this morning is uh, I was reading about astrology. I was reading about something called my north node, south node. It says, it's astrology, basically the north node in your astrology chart is like what you're moving towards, what you came here to learn. Your south node is what you learned kind of like in a past life and it's what you're moving out of. I was reading this this morning and realizing just how much I resist trusting the universe. And here's, here's my, I'll just kind of share my astrology real quick, just to give you an example of this. But like my north node is Pisces. My south node is Virgo. South node, Virgo, is it, basically what it says on everything I read. <laughs> was like in a past life, you were very regimented. You were a perfectionist. You had to do everything perfectly. You have a crazy work ethic. You like routines. Virgo is an earth sign. It's very grounded. Pisces is more about the imagination. It's more about dreaming. It's more about trusting. It's more about having, having fun, having play. And the thing I believe I did come here to learn is I, I came here, I know it's because it's the life theme for me, but I came here how to learn how to let go of believing I have to work so hard all the time and all this internal pressure I put on myself because whether I like to admit it or not, I'm a form, I do have a form of perfectionism. One of the things it says is you're very micro, you micromanage and it's one thing I'm trying my best to let go of because with my team, I know it drives them freaking nuts because every little thing is so important to me. I'm like, no, this is how we do this. This isn't being done correctly. And then it becomes like, I'm like, I'm like kind of being my stepmom, like this, my stepmom who is like constantly nitpicking me. I'm like nitpicking everybody else because I nitpick myself. I'm so freaking hard on myself all the time. Why? Probably because I'm afraid of some, level, some deeper level. I know that intellectually that perfectionism normally stems from a feeling of not being good enough. And when you don't feel good enough, you put all this internal pressure on yourself to always be better, to always be better, to always be better. And the thing is, is in this life, I came here to let that go, to then be more trusting, to enjoy the process more, to be more of like a, like a dreamer, use my imagination, become more of an artist. And artists hold themselves back so often because if you're an artist and you're a perfectionist, it's very challenging. Because perfectionism says that there's this like unrealistic level that you must get to and at the same time, you're not able to be creative and like try new things, tap into the creative. Like think about it, you're imposing a left brain mentality of regiment and logic onto the right side of the brain, which is like expression and abstract and creative. But there, I, I think I found in my past a lot of comfort in rigidity, a lot of comfort in perfectionism because I had to be perfect in order to, to get by from seven to 15 years old, my ex-stepmom is an army sergeant. She's literally like an army sergeant. Like if things weren't perfect, get locked outside. Things weren't perfect, not able to eat. <laughs> I was talking to my Nana yesterday because my Nana was a huge part of my, um, my freedom actually because she was the one that kind of put pressure on my dad back in 2000 and I don't even remember, 2007, like seven, eight, I don't even know. When, when, my, when my dad and my ex-stepmom went through the divorce and then all of a sudden my brother and I were allowed to have friends. We didn't have to earn going to school. We were allowed to eat food. She's like, well, the first month you moved in after the divorce happened, I knew there was something wrong because you gained 30 pounds in one month. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, you gained 30 pounds in a month. 
we were skinny as hell when uh, we got out of, when my dad started to divorce my ex-stepmom. But um, that was because we had to sneak food. We lived in, my brother and I lived in a kitchenette at this house. It was actually a nice house and it was a house that was always being remodeled. We always lived in remodeled houses, so there was always construction happening. We lived in a little 70s kitchenette that what, it was the only part of the house that wasn't remodeled. My brother and I, there was a, uh, it was like a gardener used to live in that, in that house. It was like a garden quarter for like the gardener. So there was, a, there was like a, a wrought iron gate to the side of the house with like seven foot ceilings a 70s outdated kitchen, and we were given like a bowl of, we were given a box of cereal and a gallon of milk every week. My brother and I had to make that last a whole week. We were given something normally, TV dinners every night. We ate separate from everybody else. My grandma mentioned this to me. I didn't realize, not that I'm, sometimes I, I eh, it's weird. There's this conflict I have within myself where uh, on one hand, I know sharing my story is like kind of relatable because then people can see like how to break out of the old. And then on the other side of it, I'm like, am I recreating that same energy over and over again and staying tied to the past? I was listening to like an Abraham Hicks thing last night. And I was, I was curious, what is Abraham Hicks perspective? Because a lot of times it's think about our thought, think about our thought, just think better thoughts to manifest what you want. I'm like, well, what about going into the childhood stuff and like feeling it to heal it? You know, it's like, well, every time you do that, you're re introducing the energy over and over again. I'm like, well, I could see that, but I think to a point, you become aware of it, you feel it, you heal it, then you can like really move on because you've like smoothed out the energy and there's not that resistance inside about what happened, you know? But anyways, by, by having, like there was, I think as well, when in my life I experienced more expansion than anything else was when I went from the, the control of my ex-stepmom to having freedom. But with that freedom was a weird energy of anxiety because now I'm in this unknown where I can watch TV, I can play video games, I can hang out, I can play basketball. Um, I could do things I was never allowed to do growing up. I could read books, I, did, like I, I would get Harry Potter books. I would sneak Harry Potter books to read because I wasn't allowed to watch TV or whatever. And I'd get those taken away. Now I could read books and shit without getting them taken away. Which is, I know it's probably weird to some of you to hear like that. It sounds so freaking weird. But there was anxiety that came with the unknown where then I was able to like do whatever I want, but there's a part of me that secretly craved the control of my past because I knew I could, I would sleep better at night. I knew where I was uh, allowed to be and not allowed to be. Now there was no line. Now I had to put that pressure on myself. I had to put not that pressure, but I had to put, that's probably what I did is I put pressure on myself and I became a controller in my own life in order to get my own needs met. But one of the things that really helped me more than anything else with this process was leaning into the unknown and letting go and welcoming, it's called the letting go technique, welcoming the emotions that came up welcoming the emotions of like doing something new instead of resisting it and holding not letting yourself feel. So if there's something, there's probably something in your life you know that if you step into, if you lean into, will transform your life, but you're afraid to do it. What I encourage you to do is to begin to brush up against that edge, to begin to make new choices about who you are because the truth is, is you are an eternal spiritual being living a temporary human experience and you're only limited by the attachments you have to your current limitations and belief systems. Give yourself permission to be a new version of you. Every moment you're a new you. 2017, I made the choice to be a full-time YouTuber version of me. I kept doing it every day. Guess what? It became my reality. You can get, and it was, it was scary. There was a perfectionism. There was like, uh, there was a lot of blocks that came up, but you get through those blocks by committing to a new you. Commit to a new you. Become aware of the beliefs. Commit to a new you. How can you today commit to a new you and understand that as you commit to a new you, you will literally begin to bridge yourself onto a new reality. The only reason you're stuck is because you believe you're stuck and you believe that being stuck isn't a part of the process. Let being st stuck be a part of you becoming aware that you believe you're stuck, that there's an attachment there. There's a fear there that you have of stepping into the unknown and then have the courage to take the leap. Take that leap of faith. And know that as you do, stuff will come up for you to release, but I promise you it will be worth it. I would not be here. I say this from experience. This isn't some intellectual book I read that I'm explaining to you. I've done this. 
Taking the leap of faith is worth it. And you will become a new version of you in the process. And it changes absolute everything. If you want to change, don't try to change the external. You must first let go of the things you internally attach to and then the external changes on its own accord. It's just a reflection. That's it. Now when you raise your vibration, that's really what allows you to perceive of more freedom. Helps you let go of trapped emotion. Helps you heal your inner child. Those are the, the, the chains, the shackles of the past. If you want to learn more about what is called your vibration, if you want to calibrate your vibration, get a meditation for taking it to the next level, then go to whatsmyvibration.com, www.whatsmyvibration.com and learn the most powerful process and meditation that will help you to get to the next level. And also, if you haven't checked it out yet, there is a meditation right here that will show you how to raise your dominant vibration permanently. Listen to this meditation for 21 days and watch how much your life changes. This meditation will change your dominant vibration permanently. Your vibration is a combination of how you think, feel, and act.